All right, welcome to the Straight Red Card. I think Brett and I have been talking for an hour in between segments, so we are pretty toasty. And we're full of at least five to ten pounds of toxic poop. So we've been told by the commercial that usually... Full circle, sometime, I'm not talking about your intestines either. Oh, I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, that's what this guy says. So, you know, we're just full of shit. It's science, Derek. Don't question science. Well, the fact that he calls it toxic is the thing that it's like it yeah, makes it you think like there's just shit sitting in you. Dude, that's poop like, is toxic. It's just toxic as shit, and it's all fucking yeah. up your intestines. Yeah, it's a really manipulative commercial. Drink my so, lemon juice; it'll clean you right out. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, oh, I did did want to say that say this as well. We did pass the 200k view mark. Woo! So we're nearly at a quarter of a million. We're very close. So thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting. Um, and we're just going to keep on going on at this yep. point. Hopefully, we'll be around for another quarter. Hey. Hey, that would be nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, for sure. Um, I did watch a little show on uh, bull sharks swimming up rivers and attacking mm. people in Australia. And oh, I'm, are they talking about Mississippi? Uh, and they've been up the Mississippi mm -hmm. as far as St. Louis. So nope. the next time you you think about like taking a swim, nobody um, swims in Mississippi. Just like nobody really true. swims in guys. Come on. It's true. It's true because the water's dirty, or it's getting cleaner. Dude, it was, it's it's ton, they have they have tons of farm runoff. It's it's gross, gross, yeah. gross, gross. I remember when I lived in West Point, New York, when my dad was teaching there. Um, they always said we would go fishing at the Hudson. You always had to throw the fish back in because they're like, "Don't eat that shit. That's mm -hmm. gross." And this is back in the eighties. Uh, I'll swim up from Three Mile Island or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, the, the crazy thing is that now you can fish in the Hudson again. Like it's, it's, throw legit. It away. it's legit. So they clean that shit up. Hmm. That's good to know. But at the same time, what I did not know when I was swimming in the Hudson was that bull sharks swim regularly up the Hudson. And, you know, West Point's not that far from the mouth where the the sea feeds into the river and it's kind of crazy now i would not do that now because i have such a shark phobia so there's that um so yeah i mean if you have a shark phobia and i do i'm not swimming in fucking anything that a bull shark could be in and that could be like river i mean lakes too i mean those fuckers are everywhere mm. i feel or like you're more science you're more you're more likely to get bit by a water moccasin or some poison water, water moccasin yeah we have those here in indiana in the southern part <laughs> um so yeah i've been chased by some of them um actually when i was swimming um uh, or near uh lake monroe was it water moccasins yeah i had one like come at me from the water onto the shore and like literally get in my grill and I'm like, I'm running. I'm running. You're small, but I'm running. <laughs> Dude, uh, Lake Monroe is su it's such a weird reservoir because there's no natural bodies of water in Indiana. They're all they're all dammed up reservoirs. Yeah, but guys. It was such and, a such a yeah. such a weird weird uh, one when uh, my uh, my senior year in Bloomington. So it had been a uh, summer of 2006. There was like a drought. And uh, the that Morris Reservoir is a, a large source of water for, uh, unfortunately, drinking, where, but also like just bathing and any form of water is being pumped from that shit. It's where my parents live, Morris Reservoir. They no, not Morris. I'm thinking Monroe. I'm sorry, Monroe. Oh, I'm Monroe. About okay, okay. Uh, and uh, so I, I went to Four Seasons to eat with a, a girl I was dating at the time there, right there off of uh, Lake Monroe. Yeah, and uh, I'm looking out. I'm looking out uh, past the docks, and I'm like, what the fuck is that? And I, I found out that there is a foundation just off the docks of an old school. Yep, that got flooded by when, when they dammed up uh, for uh, the quote unquote Lake Monroe. Yeah, they didn't even bother getting rid of all the buildings in <laughs> yeah. the towns. They just said like, okay, people are gone. They left the cemeteries too. There were some cemeteries they didn't like. There's a couple retreat. coffins popping up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're just like, okay people are gone we're filling this shit up with water so yeah yeah indeed so weird shit um yeah. Uh, yeah same thing with where my parents live up in noblesville it is um 
you know, it's a, a reservoir as well. And, uh, well, and we, right by my parents is guys said the same thing, but, uh, I feel like the weirdest thing in guys is they're right next to the, the main bridge over guys is a bridge underwater that was, uh, that was flooded out when they dammed it up. Yeah. 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 Some bad planning there. <laughs> <laughs> you would think you would demolish some of that shit. All right, yeah. let's get to let's get to segment three. Let's start with the big question um, first. Jody Ryle, um, what is our best position, rank one through eleven, based on depth? I would like to see your opinion. I would say the number so- six position is eleventh because we don't have a true backup. Would like to know your thoughts. Keep up the good work. So that's from Jody Rowe. You were saying, oh, would you ask? Well, I, was gonna say, I was going to verify that one was our most deep position and 11 being our weakest. Well, but he, we, he finished it right there. Why don't we start with the weakest then and work forward? Okay. Because, I, yeah. You know, I, agree, I, agree with, I agree with him that it's uh, six, by the way. Yeah, but I mean, it's also left back. It's kind of shady if you're going to use Dest's right back. And let's say Anthony Robinson goes down, but you do mm. have Scally, right? So yeah. Uh, so, uh, so again, uh, for for the worst, the number eleven is six for me because once Adams is down, you're looking at Acosta. Okay, I guess maybe yeah. you can look at a a, a dual uh, covering of box to box of like a Musa West with a combo ten. But that won't. A lot happen. of people are looking at that. It's not going to happen, right? <laughs> but it's a possibility. I mean, it's always possible. The day Burhalter plays a four two three one, I will, <laughs> I will drink merrily. Let's hey, see. I mean, drink it anyway. Drink merrily, anyways. Which point? Yeah, I will. <laughs> I will. I will uh, you know, I'll give. Them, I I will prostitute myself to go. the locally local community, there. but you know, it's just not going to happen. So that happens anyways. What's your point? <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> but anyways, but yeah, six, six is our weakest spot right now. Yeah, and then it's left back, I think. And then, I I threw I threw nine as the next uh, weakest. Really? Because, so you think striker is so thinner? After after Pepe, we have a lot of question marks. We have players who can play the position, like a sergeant, a P a DK, DK, even a hobby. Yeah. Uh, you can throw any of those players in there as possibilities. They they haven't really shown for the U.S. team yet. They've had some perks here, some perks there. They've had good games where they play, but not produce. Um, but no, I put them there because I have left back as my, my whatever, uh, ninth spot. Because once you have Robinson, you still have Scally, you still have Des, and then you can fall back onto Bello and Vines if you need May- to. Maybe. Um, I don't think the striker position is as weak as it's made out to mm. be. Um, I think Sergeant's still a a legitimate center sure. forward. I still think I think, think Peacock and D D care D care are options. still legit too. Sure. Yeah. So I, I'm not sure I could make that. I I would make that my third worst hmm. spot. But we can disagree well, with look that. at this. That's fine. Look at this. We're going off script here, and yeah. we're disagreeing about something. Awesome. Hey. <laughs> so let's like and then you know I, I mean we're talking positions but the eights are the same position for uh burhalter so you know um, that's one position and i would say it is also fairly weak but i think it's the next weakest position it, it's interesting it's an interesting uh topic there because we have some of our strongest players at that point like some some strong options. Let's put it McKinney, that way. McKenny, Musa, Adams, or not Adams, McKenny, Musio, Luca De La Torre. So we're, we're looking at at least four deep that I would be comfortable with. I think I'm comfortable with it, but we haven't seen enough of Luca De La Torre. Sure, we haven't seen. I yeah, we have, blame that on somebody in particular, but we haven't seen enough of Busio. So I'm still a little uncomfortable if McKenny goes down. Or Musa goes down. Who goes well, there? That's because you have uh, rolled on or Legit instead. And people <laughs> need people need to quit quit Queet. dreaming. Quit 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 dreaming. <laughs> people need to quit dreaming that Reina is gonna play. I know that Berhalter said he's thought about it. That doesn't mean shit. Reina is not going to play a fucking eight for this team. His I eights, think you're likely to see Aronson back there before Reyna. And he tried that and it didn't work. 
Well, I mean, so, a lot a lot of that El Salvador game didn't work. Right, but I mean, certainly he's Aronson's more likely than Reyna. Reyna is not a workaholic. I mean, he does some work. He does, but he not he's not Aronson. So no, I do not think that Reyna, if healthy, is going to play an eight spot. I don't think that's how Greg's system, which is a box to box eight. Both eights are box to box. There's no 10 involved until, well, some sort of advantage is gained and one of the eights can become a 10 the last second. But he wants those eights to be box to box. So I don't see Rain. He's going to play where? Um, I listen, uh, if Greg changes and we see a change in Greg, then I'll change my opinion. But no. Um, so. I think center midfield's kind of weak there um, after the Musa McKenney core. Um, and depending on who you think you can bring in, uh, it's going to be Berhalter's guys that he's going to bring in. And that's going to be legit and a cost. Well, and that's, that's not, that's not to discredit our actual depth itself. That's discredit our, our manager because Correct. I wouldn't bring in his favorites immediately next in fact, quite frankly, his his favorites would probably fall uh, fifth and sixth in line, if anything. Correct. And then we move on to um, what's the next one? Maybe I got, I got right back as my next one. Do you? I mean, because Dest and Scally, right? That's well. I mean, that's good. the same thing with left back. In all honesty, I know Scally except, covers... Eric, except for Robinson can't play le- uh, right. So, no, so Scally kind of covers I, both. Yeah. You know? So I've I've got I've got right back, which you know we have Des Scally, but then you have Yedlin, Cannon, Moore because Yedlin I think is still obviously very serviceable, and Cannon and Moore right now who aren't seeing any playing time are just kind of fillers at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so we're looking at three deep, which isn't bad at right back, quite frankly. Um, but I mean, when you're looking at the depth at center back, and you're looking the, the depth at our wing positions and goalkeeper, I, I don't know if uh, I don't know if right back would push ahead of either of those. Yeah, and then I think the next one center back, right? I threw goalkeeper at center back. Did you in front yeah. of center back? I just think Brooks is questionable. I mean, I'm I'm in love with Miles, uh, but I'm not in love with Brooks right now. And so I, I just find it a very tentative position. Sure, can, I mean you can make that. I mean you definitely can make that argument. I look. I mean I look at uh, Miles Robinson as obviously being a a, a wall for our center back, uh, a lock and solid option. But uh, I mean you're, you're looking at Brooks, Richard, and yeah, got McKenzie, Zimmerman, Long, all serviceable players, but also serviceable enough to have bad games from time to time too. Mm. So mm-hmm. it's always possible that it's 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 up who you know which 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 uh, player is going to show up. I'm okay with Zimmerman. I'm not a big fan of McKenzie. Um, so yeah, there's some depth there. There's, de- but- there's definitely a ranking of the center backs. I'm just saying when you're looking at who's partnering with Robinson at this point, it just depends on who's showing up. You know, which which um, player which player is showing up. But I don't have as much of an issue with our goalkeepers. It's either Stefan or Turner, and I'm fine with either one of them. You know, I'm fine with either one of them. So, um, I, in all honesty, I was actually I'm still kind of okay with uh, Horvath because even though he hasn't really seen any playing time for his club team, little bits here and there, but he had the same issue with Bruges, and he came into Nations League and absolutely killed it. So, yeah, yeah. So, so I, I mean, don't. I guess you know. I guess maybe I can move goalkeeper up to two. The position where the last position of worry is where yeah. if there's just, any position we don't have any concerns with. <laughs> we're just stacked there. I mean, whether it's Aronson, Reyna, Polisic, Weya, we're fine. We're fine. Um, we're good there. We're good to go right. there. You can add Conrad, um, De La Fuente. I think we're good there. I think mm-hmm. we were deep enough. We don't have to worry about that position. So I hope we answered your question. Then we'll we'll, uh, we'll end up nixing one of those players and throw in Ariel in there instead. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm channeling my inner Burholder. But you're right. Ariel is going to make this team. Mm. <laughs> He's going to. There's no especially doubt about if he keeps scoring goals. I know. So we got to blow through these rest of these questions. Hopefully, Let's not blow anything. 
No, I, I mean, sometimes you have to blow things. Let's take a breather. No, it doesn't work either. <laughs> Let's gotta... move forward. <clears throat> is... Only forward. Is that what the phrase is? I what's, guess. What's the U.S. phrase? Oh, God. I don't know. It's something cheesy. It's. I, I feel like it's got to be like something like only forward. I think that's what it was, but I'm not 100% positive. Um, well, God, it's, it's killing me, though. Well, then you're not moving forward because... You know, this only <laughs> only moving forward thing. You know what? In life, folks, you move forward and backwards and then forward again. That's how life actually fucking works. You don't just move forward. Learning requires going backwards and fucking having some retrospect. It is and, only forward. Well, that's stupid. That's dumb. <laughs> that's just for that's just that's that's just stupid. Because listen, about life is about learning, and if you don't have setbacks, you're not learning anything. It was a uh, box of chocolates, and, and no, it's not a box of chocolates. It's like <laughs> if you are not learning things, then you're not trying enough to fail. And if you try and you fail, you learn from those things. So fuck that slogan. It, fuck maybe, them all. maybe that's why Burholder keeps calling in his favorites. Is he's not afraid to fail? No. That's not why he does it. <laughs> he doesn't care about that slogan either. I guarantee it. <laughs> no one cares about that slogan. Brett, I'm surprised you even recognized that you, it existed. All frankly, right. yeah, it's, it was just the only only forward. That was come up with some fucking halfwit marketing <laughs> dipshit at U.S. Soccer. It's probably the same people who designed their website. So, yes, probably. <laughs> only forward maybe you guys got to go backward and redesign that shit because that's not forward mm. the fucking garbage shit. site garbage site garbage fucking marketing ploy only forward only forward in your ass fuck you all right so this maybe the reason why we get blacklisted though derek <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure it is um is the form of the u.s players abroad concerning you yes it is some of them are concerning me um but it varies week to week it does it does you know because there was a time when wes's uh wes's productivity and form with juventus was concerning and now right. it seems like juve can't survive without him <laughs> which i know we'll get shit on for that but whatever i mean <laughs> i mean exactly but hoppy not playing that's concerning um brian reynolds not playing at all or not even being mm. on the bench that's that's concerning. That's on par. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I mean, are there concerns? There surely are. There definitely is. And I don't think Hoppy's going to make this next team because of that situation. I don't think Corvat's well, going to make the next team, the next window, because of his situation. So there are things no. to be concerned about. McKenzie at Genk, that's concerning. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Do we have concerns? I do. But it's Gally and Gladbach. Not concerning. Not concerning at all. Lucio, Venezia, not concerning. Outside of the fact that they're always in contention for relegation, that's concerning. Yeah, but they're doing okay. <laughs> they're fighting hard. Yeah. I'll give them credit. And then Tessman starting and playing 90, that was great. Mm -hmm. um, who do you have coming on your next show? So after the November window. I'll be there. <laughs> of course you're going to be there. <laughs> Brian Shredder will be on our show. Uh, Brian Shredder is an old friend of ours, and mm -hmm. uh, he writes for ASN and a number of other, I think, Sports Illustrated. I'm not sure. Been all forgot. over the place. Well, we Brian and I just had like an hour long conversation last week or last like this weekend, and I can't remember all the about last... toxic poop. <laughs> I can't remember the last half of it because I was really wasted. All right, so you know I will get back with brian we talked about the show and he knows that we're going to be you know probably drinking during the show and that he should too so we'll see that might make for a great show brian is one of the best writers he was at yanks abroad for a while i know he did do some stuff for sports illustrated i don't know i mean he said he does a lot of work but he has a day job too which is crazy for as much writing as he does um <laughs> Maybe it's a really slow day job and he's got a lot of free time. It didn't sound like it, but we can ask about <laughs> that when he comes on. Um, if you could, guys could play a different formation and lineup, what would it be? Okay. That's I feel like we've answered this before. 
we have and, and the only other lineup and i got chastised for this for me was a four two three one and but it doesn't look much different like as far as the players that i would have i would have you know uh, Robinson on the left, Dest on the right, Brooks and Miles in the middle. I'd have Adams and and um, um, McKenzie playing McKenny. the whole McKenny, excuse me, God, I am damn dude. I know I need mental help. <laughs> Adams and McKenny playing the holding role, and then um, up top you could have uh, the three. You could have Reina, Polisic. Aronson up top, you could have Pepe. I mean, there's all kinds of things you could do with a 4 2 3 1. So I don't know what I would pick. It would depend on whether players were healthy or not healthy or whatever. I don't know. Do you have another formation? I know you like your empty bucket. Empty bucket. <laughs> I knew you were going to go there. I knew let's you go, were going to go the, the same four, mm -hmm. same uh, same initial two. Mm -hmm. Then you go Polisic Reina playing the Donovan Dempsey. Uh, uh, tandem wide rolls, yeah, but pinch in, right? And then you play uh, uh, Hoppy and Peppy. Oh, I'd love it. Problem I'd solved, it. problem solved, I'd, people. I'd, I'd, I'd all... solve the USMT wo ro woes. It's I'd all the woes are that. solved. Yeah, I'd love that. I would love to see that. It's yeah. not gonna, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> Never gonna happen. In Bring back my... Bradley, Bob Bradley, Bob Bradley, Bob. Yeah, I don't see it happening. I'd be curious to see what Bob would do with this with this uh, pool, how he would vary it up. I'm sure they've asked him at the USSF. <laughs> <laughs> think so? No, they, Bob, no, they haven't. Bob, no. what, can you please talk to Greg? I know, I know you guys are okay and you're relatively decent friends, but can you at least talk to him and tell him to do something <laughs> different? It's 433 knots. It's just not working for us. I think if Bob Bradley got a call from the USSF, he'd just fucking not pick it up <laughs> you just say fuck, fuck <laughs> you motherfuckers in the ass for replacing me with fucking klinsman without telling me that without fucking a fucking mouthpiece yeah. without a phone call <laughs> you pieces of fucking garbage i found out on twitter no <laughs> i yeah i don't know if he did but i do know he found out a lot later than yeah. he should have um and he's pretty bitter about it um last question of the night before we oh god what have we done brett so last question time to give alan sonora and johnny cordosa a call up sure yes but it's not happening um let's integrate him you could you this could is the, integrating is a, a, a just another like verticality type phrase at this point. Exactly. It's you know, bullshit. It's, oh. it's bullshit is what it is. <laughs> um, because neither of them are going to be called and neither of them are going to be integrated. And not it doesn't, you know, take away from the fact that both of them play in two of the top most historically noted clubs in South America. And they are starters for both of those teams as as of recently. And they've been producing, especially Alan Sonora. So, no, I, I and Alan was in an interview not long ago saying, I'm ready. Call me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We, we, we call in players from MLS all the time. And not, nothing really against MLS. I, I still watch all the games, a lot of the games and stuff like that. But we're calling in players from our, our, our local league. I think we can call in players from some of the top teams in South America, too. You would think. Let's just like I said, Greg, pick pick your pick your twenty two players because every every camp you're decreasing the number of players you're bringing in <laughs> because of injuries mainly. But um, yeah. Uh, yeah, bring it, bring in your core, and then you know what? You bring in an additional four or five players that may that probably won't see uh, the starting or the, even the game day roster. Bring them in, and they can cheer from the the press box or whatever, but uh. Bring them in, start integrating them into the team. And you know what? You may be surprised and may find out that, God, one of these players might be better than Legette and Roldan. I mean, yeah, Alan Sonora oh. might might be better than De La Torre. We don't could know. Be, could be. Who knows? We, you know, we well, don't, we don't know even that. know if De La Torre is uh, <laughs> uh, international quality because we just haven't seen him on the pitch at all. Would De La Torre start every game for Independiente in Argentina? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. All I know is I've watched a lot of clips, 
with Alan Sonor and I watch him and I watch the stats and I follow the stats and the numbers and he's doing very fucking well for Independiente and he has made it very clear he wants to play for the United States and we have not given him much of a look at you all keep on knocking but you can't come in that's correct it's it's <laughs> not good it's not good it needs to be changed so um Ari, I think just bad scouting, bad scouting as a whole. It seems like USSF is just like uh, tunnel vision to Europe. Like I see nothing else besides. Well, Europe. it's tunnel vision domestically and tunnel vision Europe. I get it. Maybe, um, maybe, maybe domestically it's at the beginning of the tunnel, but yeah. Yeah, but South American players get no, I mean, Cardosa did the Olympic thing. That didn't work out well. But that's not all. In his fairness, fault. the whole <laughs> the whole big thing didn't go out well. Yeah, Christ was a disaster, or as we're calling him, Crease. <laughs> so I think we're just no, that's calling... the that's the villain from uh, uh, from Karate Kid, isn't it? Crease, the uh, the instructor of uh, Cobra Kai. Yeah, could be, but I think Jason Crease. <laughs> I think butt crack. So there we go. <laughs> all right, we're gonna end this fucking long ass segment like all the other ones are long ass segments and i know you guys are always saying we don't do long enough shows so if this isn't satisfy you well goddamn i guess start writing i don't know what you're gonna do but ride a donkey or whatever and read a book because i don't know what better we could do you're gonna get, you're gonna get sick doing that i know but it takes a long time to read a book when you're riding a donkey. So, you know, I think that's apropos. Um, but make sure that you like, you subscribe, you ring the dingy dingy bell, and that you share it with one of your relatives who has a lot of Neanderthal uh, DNA. And you're pretty sure by the fa fact that they have a very high brow ridge, no chin whatsoever. Turns out we're long lost cousins who... You actually have a chin. I think I have one too. So I have I totally, a big I totally ass got a chin. chin. Yeah. Oh, dude, my chin's like jutting out. So the more I let my beard grow out, the bigger, the more defined my chin looks too. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. That's a good point. So you can cover up your Neanderthal. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I, I found that I don't get a lot of uh, uh, callbacks for job interviews because of my Neanderthalness. So really, how rude. I feel Thank like there's you. some form of discrimination I can. Uh, Sue them for or something like that. I think it's just your first name. Brett. Brett. Two Brett. T's. Who spells it with two T's? <laughs> Brett. That sounds like a Neanderthal <laughs> name. Brett, come here with the sticks of fire. Wood. We must light and cook. Brett, meal. make fire good. <laughs> All right. Again, make sure you share it with some of a relative that looks like a Neanderthal. And um, we'll be back probably Thursday. I mean, all these shows are going to last till Wednesday. So not only that, but I mean, we're going to be expecting a uh, a roster here soon. We are. I imagine we are sometime it's, this week. It's close. So yeah, I mean, we're going to be skiing down that uh, yellow boots toboggan. Green Mountain boots. Soon. Green boots toboggan mountain soon. Straight to the the line. When, when you get home, when, when we get done with this call here, Derek, you just got to write on the on your blackboard. McKinney, green boots. I know. I know. Fix I, this. <laughs> I have here written green boots equals yellow boots. And then the more I thought about it, I'm like, that's a confusing way to put that, Derek. <laughs> you just confused me. Like green boots, not yellow boots. Jesus Christ. I'm at, I have to admit, I need some mental help. All right. So until the next time, it's right, Ricard. Good night. <laughs>